Uinta mapping and data collection software by Juniper Systems is meant to be customized for your job. This video will provide an overview of a typical process to learn Uinta so you can meet your data collection and project management goals. Additional detailed training videos and support materials can be found on our website at www.junipersys.com. If you have questions about your specific scenario, please contact us on our website web chat or call our factory and we're happy to assist or provide additional training. Let's get started with Uinta. These four categories represent a typical workflow to successfully learn and deploy Uinta in the office in the field. In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at each one of these categories, but the majority of this video, we're actually going to create a test project together, and it's a good way to learn how Uinta works, um, but you can also create that test project and apply it to your specific situation. And once you get that tested, then you can kind of refine that template and deploy it to your uh, live data collection situations. So let's have a look at the first category, setup. And setup generally includes kind of three steps. Uh, the first step is to set up your hardware. Uh, so in, you, know, you might have a Mesa rugged tablet or some other kind of Windows 10 device. You've got to go through the Microsoft setup process. And sometimes it's overlooked, but you, you definitely want to pay attention to making sure that you set preferences on that mobile device, you know, making sure that your screen's not going asleep all the time. Your virtual keyboards that pop up have the kind of most efficient data entry keyboard that will match your scenario. If you are using a, an external GPS like our high accuracy geode, here is where you would use the Windows Bluetooth pairing and pair to your geode, just like you would a headset or something else uh, like that. Next, you generally want to install Uinta to any of the devices you plan to run the software on. So a typical situation would be that you install Uinta to an office laptop or an office computer, but then also install it to your, your mobile device like your Mesa rugged tablet. And installing it in that way allows you to kind of use your cloud synchronization where you can create a cloud project and the data can then be transferred between the two devices back and forth. You can find that download file at this link here. And once you have it installed, you can then license Uinta. You know, a few notes about Uinta licensing and how it works is you must be connected to the internet to license it the first time. After that, you don't need to be connected to the internet at all to use Uinta you know, unless you're using a cloud project. And if you do have a Uinta Pro license, uh, this same license can be used on two devices at a time. A Uinta Field license can only be used on one Windows 10 device at a time. And any of these licenses, they can be transferred to some other Windows 10 device. So if you have a problem with one of your devices or get a new computer, you can transfer that yourself just by going to the Uinta menu. Uh, selecting help. All of these licenses, they can be bought with either a one-year or a three-year license type. So in the next stage, we, we recommend planning before you run out and start collecting field data on an active project. And the first step in doing that is really just set your goals. And this doesn't have to be a, a very long uh, process. A simple way is to just create a list of everything that you want to map or the data that you want to collect and, and record all of the information you need to know about each one of those things. So here's some examples. You know, if you have a, a gas line that you're trying to map, you would put in your list a gas line, and then you would record the different fields about that gas line. Things like diameter, uh, the values of the diameter that you would have, like a two inch diameter, a four inch or a six inch diameter. Uh, if you need to know the inspection date, uh, you would put that there as well. Things like status are pretty common. Good, need service, needs repair, those kind of values that would be associated with status. If you can make a list of all of the things you want to map and what you want to know about each one of those things, that will help you as you customize you into in the next step. If you have any existing paper forms from your existing processes, these can be a good reference because really essentially what you can do is migrate from paper to a digital form in Uinta. Any existing reports, so if your end result is that you're trying to create a report, it's a good idea to have that report ready and handy when you're customizing Uinta so that you can make sure that the field data collected will actually produce the information necessary to generate the report that you're trying to do as your ultimate goal. Uh, so, you know, other things that you might want to gather in this step would include things like uh, map layers. So if you have some existing map layers or data that you want to import to Uinta, uh, it's good to gather that up now as example data sets for your sort of testing and customization process. So once you have that stuff together and your goals are set and you know what you want, 
Uh, then it's a matter of customizing Uinta. Uinta forms can be quite complex and support a variety of data collection needs. We also have custom templates that support common use cases like utilities or irrigation, a lot of natural resources application, and often those can be a, a good starting point for customization. Finally, once you have your project customized, it's a really good idea to test it before you deploy it. Make sure that everything's working exactly how you want. We do recommend recommend testing on the device only type project so that you're not introducing other sort of variables that might impact your test. Once you've refined that, then start it as a cloud project. Once that project template's created, then you can reuse that over and over again. Then you'll be successful moving from office field back to the office. The Uinta software that you have in the office in the field is actually the same software. The screen size just changes. Some features are more commonly used in the office or the field. At this point, we'll go ahead and, and create a training project together. And it's going to be one where we create some gas and water assets. And we'll kind of move along this process and you'll see how that all works. OK, and now we're going to create a test project together. And the first step in the process is to set up your hardware. Often in that process, you will be pairing your external GPS, like if you're using our high accuracy geode. But in this video, we're going to assume everything's done. Again, if you need help with setup or licensing, please contact Juniper Systems. We'd be happy to help. The next step in the process was to plan your projects. In this particular project, I pre-created a list in Excel of all of the things we want to map in this project. So I'm going to map a gas line a gas valve, water line, water valve, and a manhole. And for each one of those things, I've identified the things that I want to know about each record type. So for example, in this gas line, I want to have an ID. So like gas line one, gas line two. I also want to know its diameter. So two inch, four inch, six inch. And I want that to be so selectable by the user in the field. The other things I want to know for all of these are the status. So is it good or does it need repair? That also will be a select list. I can choose to have a photo of these things, um, have some additional repair notes, for example, or different fields. And, and these can actually be pretty infinite. You can have as many fields as you want, and you can have as many record types as you want, and you can even, even categorize and group those in different ways. And I'll show an example of that. Uh, again, other, other examples of good ways to prepare for a project are just by looking at paper forms. So if you have existing processes, even things as complex as what you see in these type of example forms, these can be recreated in Uinta. It's, uh, some of these may require a little bit of advanced features, but none of this requires any kind of code or anything, you know, any kind of special technical skills. So going back to our example project list, this is the stuff that we're going to try to pre-create. So we're going to come back and reference this um, as we create our project. Next, I'm going to launch Uinta. And when you first launch Uinta, if you don't have any projects already, um, you're going to be presented with this. And in our case, I'm going to start a device only project. So this is local on this device. It allows you to test your projects in a way where you're not uh, having other variables introduced like internet connection or cloud synchronization, that kind of thing. So we always recommend starting to first do your projects as device only, um, refine your project when you're when you're happy with it, save it as a template. You can start it as a cloud project and uh, and move on from there. But in our case, we're going to go ahead and name this project gas and water. If you have custom templates already, if you just installed you into, you likely don't. But we do have a lot of different templates available. So contact Juniper Systems. We might have something that you could use as a starting point. And then it's a matter of refining that to meet your need. In this example, we're going to choose the sample template, uh, the basic template. And you can give it a custom color or icon, but I'm just going to leave it as a default here. And so now it's creating my project and it immediately launches you to the map view. If you are connected to the Internet, you will see this map view. If you're not, you would see a white blank background. It's important to remember you went to doesn't need to be connected to the Internet to collect data and you can always collect data even if you have that white background. But in our case, we're in the office, we're designing this project, so we see the background and there's kind of a couple of paths in which you can sort of uh, design this from. Uh, you can have if you select the menu, there's the project editor, and it's going to be a list of everything you have. In this case, it's a basic template. So we have area, line, point, record. We can add new ones by selecting the plus button. Uh, or you can go back and 
design your your template or your project uh, from a view that your field users would also see. So when I select the orange plus button, I also have area, line, point, and record. So the same exact things that I saw when I was looking at the template editor. And these generic items are not what I want because we want to be able to create these things. And so what I have to do is select the pencil, select new record type, and let's add the first thing, which was gas line. And you want to want needs to know, is this an area? Is it a line that you're mapping? Is it a point? Is it a non-spatial record? Or is it something new that you want to start from scratch? So this is kind of a quick way to create something. I would I like to choose the line, and so it has all the line information already in there. Um, and what I'm going to do is then maybe I want to change this to be yellow to match gas line standard color. Um, I like this icon for it, so I'm just going to select the checkbox and notice that it's added to my list. However, if I select it, it includes these fields, the generic fields that come with a basic template, which are name, description, so these would be like notes, attachment, which allows you to attach a, a file of some kind, like a drawing, but this is also how you would launch uh, the camera of your device and you could attach photos. Um, any of these things can be changed around, but you can also add a whole bunch more fields to this as well. But in our case, if we go back and look, we have a gas line. The first field is called ID. And it's a text field, so maybe it's not just numeric values, it's also alpha values as well. And so in this case, I'm just going to change the name text field that already exists to call it ID. I can add some field hints, make it required or not required. There's some different options here that uh, you can learn in the more detailed video. Um, but now I have a field called ID. And I'm going to keep adding fields. And the next one is diameter, so 2 inch, 4 inch, or 6 inch. So I'm going to go, and you can see the different categories here, but I can just scroll down as well. And I see one of my favorites, which is select list. And I'm going to call this diameter. And I'm going to say next. Now I'm going to add 2 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch. And if this were a, a value where I wanted to allow multiple things to be selected at the same time, I would just check this box here. And if you didn't know all of the values that are possible, you can keep this checked and users can add it in the field and then it will persist and they can add and maintain this list themselves as well. So that's a nice feature. So I'm just going to say the checkbox. Um, notice that I now have diameter there at the bottom. And uh, the next thing I need is status. So I'm going to add another select list. Let's call it status. You can think of this name field here as columns or these different fields as columns in an Excel sheet when you export, for example. So status would be a column, and in there you might have good or needs repair. You have to hit the enter button to make sure it takes. Now I have status there as well, and I think that's everything we need for that gas line. But the next thing I want to do is reorder these fields so that the most important things are at the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is push status to the top. I'm going to move diameter to the top and I'm going to push status down one and diameter down. And now I have ID, diameter, and status. These are set automatically to required, but you could change it. But uh, now by having the line geometry required, someone, a field user, mapping a line, if they entered the data, they wouldn't be able to save this record if they didn't map the line. Um, nor uh, would they be able to save it if they didn't have an ID. And so we have this set up where the ID is sort of auto-captured. But another thing I may want to do is set the ID to be the label. So I'm going to add this to the label. I'm happy with how this looks. I'm going to go back. And now I have my gas line and my, my form starting to get created here. So next I'm going to add another record, and this one's going to be gas valve. And this gas valve is going to be a point type. And I'm going to base it on the generic point. Maybe I don't want sort of an icon view uh, when these things get mapped. I want it to display. Maybe I have a lot of valves that are close together. I think I want to choose, instead of an icon, have it be a shape. So something that's small, and this will produce a more clean looking map. I'm going to choose the X, and I also want it to be yellow. And so these are going to be smaller than those uh, icons that we have for the standard basic template. I'm going to say checkbox, and now I have my gas valve available to me as an option. And again, I'm going to modify the fields. 
I'm going to add the status in there as well. Now I have that in my list. I'm going to move it to the top, down, move down one more time. This next one, I wanted to show um, some additional features with uh, Uinta and the form design. So in this case, we have our fields. So when somebody maps a gas valve, these are the different data that they need to enter. OK, so next I want to add whenever I have a gas valve that has a status of needs repair, I want a tab to appear in my form called repair. And I want to allow the user in that tab to enter a field called repair notes. And these could be multiple fields as well, but then we'll keep our example kind of simple. So let's add a tab to this view. So add a tab, call it repair. And so now I'm in the repair tab and you can have sub tabs and it can go deeper than just one tab as well. But in this case, um, let's add that field and I'm going to go to my text category and choose a multi line text and call it repair notes. So now if I go back. I can see in my gas valve that I have these fields. And I also have a tab called repair. Under repair are repair notes. So I can go back. Now I want to add some conditional logic to this form. And I'm going to say add condition. If status equals needs repair, then, and I could have added multiple conditions there, but I'm just adding one, but then show, and it's, I can choose to show a certain field, uh, or uh, in this case, what I'm doing is saying show that whole tab repair. Otherwise, hide it. I'm going to complete it and see a little summary view. I'm going to save it. Now I've got some conditional logic in this form. And again, you'll see how that's going to work here momentarily. Uh, so at this point, I can keep adding the additional record types. I can go through and delete out these things that I don't want. Um, further, I can uh, do things like grouping. So for example, if I have multiple line types uh, and, and point types, I can group those here. So for example, if I had multiple point types, like this gas valve is a type of point, I can consider this like a, a folder almost, and I can choose gas valve. And I noticed down here these appeared, and I can now have gas valve under the point group. And so if this were a different type of point, I could have that in there as well. And you're going to see the result here in just a moment. Now I have two types underneath the point group. So I have gas valve and this record in this case. When you're designing your form, if your field crews are going to be looking at something that's smaller, like a tablet, you know, they may see this list of things that they're trying to do. So you can have groups and, and subgroups. This can get pretty deep as well, but this will allow you to kind of allow for some data efficient, you know, uh, navigation of this view. So I've already gone through and created the remaining record types uh, to save time. And now we can start testing this application. And so when you get into Uinta, uh, it's important to note that you have a map view as well as a list view. So if you have a bunch of things mapped as I already do, in your map view, you can see everything displayed, but you can also see it in your list view. So in your map view, let's go ahead and now connect up that GPS again. Gone through, I've selected the satellite icon, I've connected the geode, and I have a 1.1 foot uh, error accuracy value that's quite good. Um, there's my blue dot, and now I'm ready to start mapping with this with this project. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, select the orange plus button whenever I want to map something. And in this case, I have lines and points. Again, this is the exact same project that we looked at here. So now I've grouped these things. If I select points, I've got my three types. And just for example purposes, I'll map a gas valve. And there's that gas valve, and it's gas valve number two. I've got my type, which is ball, gate, or stop check. In this case, I'll call it a stop check. And a status, I have good. Or remember, we added some conditional logic. If I select needs repair, a repair tab appears. And if I select repair tab, I can enter some notes. If I flip back, I can continue filling out the form. I can enter some notes. Uh, I would 
I could launch the camera in my device and take a photo. I can uh, update my GPS location, but that GPS location was automatically captured the moment I selected gas valve. So it's meant to be efficient. Uh, whenever you're wanting to map something, make sure your GPS is positioned directly over it and then select what you wanna map and your lat long will be captured automatically. If you made a mistake or captured it prematurely, for example, you can always go and just choose update and it will update your position to wherever your GPS is at that moment. Uh, and then once you're done, you're happy with the data that you've entered, push save. And notice I've got needs repair and gas valve. So if I select this, I can also uh, see everything I wanna know about that gas valve. I can edit the record, I can delete it. I can navigate to it, I can move it and change the label, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete it because we're gonna start dealing with some of this data that we've uh, previously mapped earlier here. So this, this is kind of a handy area right here. This is your layers. Um, this is where you can see all of the different things that you've mapped. These are your editable record types in this category. So there's three categories and you can expand or collapse them by selecting uh, the category topic there. So. You know, if I want to see something like I only want to see my points on this map, I can just select this checkbox here. And now I'm only looking at the points and I can remove all the other lines. And, and it's showing that a points filter is applied. I can quickly turn that off here. Um, I can do something similar by saying, uh, hey, show me all gas valves where status equals needs repair, apply it, and it's going to show me that one asset. That's a handy feature. Uh, if I find the assets with a status of needs repair, I can then select it. Now it's highlighted. I can kind of confirm it needs some repair there. And I may want to then navigate to it. And you're going to, this navigation is quite nice. Once I start moving, it's going to show an arrow and it's just going to guide me directly to that asset and tell me when I've arrived. It works really well. Uh, and if I exit out of that, and I still got my filters applied here, so I'm going to turn those off quickly. I've also got my online maps and I can change between the different types. Um, you know, sometimes the different map background layer uh, may apply to your situation better uh, than others. There are some other options here as well. Contact Juniper Systems and we can show you how to get some other online map layers. A reminder, if you get outside to try out your project and you see something that looks like this or things look a little pixelated, it's likely just because you don't have an internet connection and you can map and work always with a blank white background and everything will be spatially accurate. However, when you get back to an internet connection, everything's gonna appear there. Uh, one handy feature for a lot of situations and a lot of customers really like this uh, feature is that with Uinta, you can also clip or download maps so that you can use them when in an offline state. So where there's no internet access and you want to have some background satellite imagery, you can download and clip that satellite imagery in advance of going to your project site. Uh, and it's also another handy feature, even if you do have access to uh, internet and you have good cell connection, for example, if you're trying to avoid paying for extra data plans for your mobile device, that's also a, another reason somebody might want to do this. So you have to do this on the device that you plan to take to the field. You could do it in the office and move the file over to the mobile device, but that file has to be on the mobile device. So it was downloaded here. So in this case, we'll kind of simulate that situation. I'm going to turn off my online maps just to simulate that. So it looks like we're we're out in the field. We don't have any internet connection. Uh, now, if I go back to my layers, uh, I can turn on the uh, Dry Canyon reference map. Now, once you've gone out, collected your data, and you're happy with your map, and you get back to the office, or you could do this from your mobile device as well, uh, but you may want to format this because now that you have your data collected, now if you want to share it with others, this export button here will allow you to do that. So you can uh, just select the export button and you have three options here. If you select these three dots, you also have a shapefile option. Now in Uinta, it's going to be what you see is what you get. So if you wanted to hire zoom level, you can play with some of those advanced settings to kind of make that uh, work exactly how you want. You can prior to export for those PDFs, 
you can change some of the uh, formatting of how that map looks. So for example, if you didn't want uh, these labels to overlap each other, you can select it and you know move labels around. Maybe I didn't want these large icons and if I want to change one of those, I can select it and up here go and uh, choose a different type. So we'll call it a shape. Maybe we'll make these uh, triangles. And I'm going to apply it to all of my water valves, not just this this one. And now all of my water valves have these small little triangles. You can also pre-filter your data. So if I only wanted to include points, I would pre-filter my data. So using the, the methods that we described earlier, I might turn off the lines or just show my points and now export my data. And that will be the only data that's included in your Excel or your PDF, for example. So those are the key features within Uinta. Uh, now that we've sort of tested this project out, if it's one that we, we know we like and it's exactly how we want it to work, we can make sure that that was saved as a template. And this is something I can then reuse if I have future projects in Uinta. And I've kind of gone through the process to set up my hardware, plan my project, and customize Uinta. I've tested it, and I've learned the different features in Uinta. Now, if I'm ready to start mapping in an active project, I can add a new project. And I'm going to call it job one, two, three, four. And instead of choosing the basic template like we did before, I can either do this new project just like my old project, gas and water test, but in this case, we saved that as a custom template. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. I'm in a new fresh blank project. When I select the orange plus button, it's exactly like I had for the test project and I'm ready to start mapping. So if you have any questions, we'd be happy to talk with you about your specific scenario and provide you some guidance. And we can even look at your data as well as help you customize uh, your form to match your needs. Thank you and good luck in getting started with Uinta.